Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Binky Bianca with some more blog talk. And today we're gonna be talking about Jesse Smollett. Now, I had forgotten about Jesse Smollett's uh, case with his alleged attack that happened, but let's take a minute and reminisce, okay? Let's get caught up with Jesse Smollett before we talk about what's going on with him now. So. Let's take a little trip down memory lane, shall we? So picture it, okay? It is 2019, early in the year. There is a bad snowstorm going on up in Chicago, a winter storm going on. And Justice Smollett has been attacked, okay? He has gone out for a subway sub. He has ran into some hooligans that also were around that subway that happened to have a rope and some bleach for him. They recognized him in this snowstorm and they decided to, according to him, to attack him. They mentioned the show that he was on at the time, which was Empire. They called him an Empire N word and an Empire F word, according to Jesse. So when he was, you know, found by police or they came to his apartment to, you know, take his report, he still had the noose around his neck. Now, I remember when this story came out, it was so shocking because it was just like, man, why, um, why is stuff like this still happening in 2019? And I remember all the celebrities and all his friends and his family and even strangers rushing like people do to social media to express disgust and outrage at the fact that this happened to him okay and then <laughs> information started coming out about what investigators were finding about this case okay <laughs> and i'm i'm trying not to laugh i shouldn't laugh because he jesse has maintained his innocence he still does to this day okay but listen man the stuff that was coming out of the time, it just was, it was crazy. So investigators were able to find that they figured out that these two guys, the Osendero brothers, okay, were involved in this attack. These guys had actually gotten on a plane to Nigeria a few hours after the attack. But when they came back to Chicago, uh, investigators were waiting for them at customs and you know these brothers decided to you know listen they weren't with the um they weren't down with the stop snitching movement they definitely started to talk they let it be known that hey according to these brothers they were paid by jesse to attack him um, that he apparently was allegedly unhappy with his salary on Empire. And also, he was unhappy with the way that people had reacted to a letter that had gone to the Empire set. And it was like a threatening letter that had gone there with racist, homophobic, political language. And it was directed at him. And it was like, no big deal. Like, nobody cared. And I guess he was upset about that. So, and they, apparently that was a false letter. That is the allegation anyway, that it was false. So Jesse was upset about that. Like he wanted his attention or something. He wanted something. I don't know what he wanted according to what people are saying. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. So he enlists these guys to do this. And there's an actual paper trail he wrote a check for $3,500 to one of the brothers. And that is part of this case. Now there's also text messages between them. I think one of them where he's like, I need your help on the low. Can you meet face to face? He took these guys allegedly to the site. Okay. They practiced the attack. They did all kinds of like, this is crazy. So it's almost like just the, you know, wrote 
like his version of a some kind of um intriguing plot or something in his mind <laughs> he just tried to act it out and it was just just done poorly you know what i'm saying so anyway jesse has maintained his innocence and he actually says that the $3,500 check was actually paying them for nutrition and training. Okay. These guys, they actually had been extras on the empire set as well. And Jesse was saying that he was preparing for another role. And so he was actually paying them to get him, get his body right or whatever. So, and we don't have a way to disprove that. Okay. But uh, except for their word against his, okay. At this point in yeah, who knows? Because they don't even have any charges at this point. And speaking of not having any charges, what ended up happening back in 2019, even though Jesse did get indicted the first time on 16 counts of disorderly conduct after the investigation, um, he actually ended up getting all of his charges dropped and they were dropped. Um, it says by the office of Cook County State Attorney Kim Fox. It was sudden and it caused an uproar. Something was going on in Chicago. A lot of people were upset about this. We're talking um, judges were upset. The mayor at the time, Rahm Emanuel, was very upset. And he definitely was vocal and public about being upset. Now, he, he cited his reason for being upset was that it sent a message that if you're in a position of influence and power, you'll get treated one way and other people will be treated another way. Um, so that's what he stated. But I mean, there's so much corruption that goes on. Like, I just really wonder what is it about Jesse Smollett's case that has, you know, people so ready to go to war, go to bat and just really dig in to the case and charge him like what is it i mean if he is guilty of the false reports and wasting all those resources i understand that and all that time i understand that piece of it but man i mean it seems like there's other stuff that could to, could use this attention and these resources in chicago i'm just saying i don't know but um, they definitely have it in for, for your boy. So they're not letting it go. And so what ended up happening was a retired Illinois appellate court judge initiated a petition to appoint a special prosecutor because they wanted to check how the Cook County prosecutors handled the case and decide whether or not Smollett should be prosecuted. And it's crazy. Like, imagine you're Jesse and <laughs> you have, let's say, alleged, 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 you have pulled your strings, you have called in your connections, your favors, your people that you know, um, you know, and these people can make things happen and they have made them happen and you feel like you are in the clear. And so you release a statement, you know, about how you're a victim, this and that and whatever. And then people aren't going to let it go. And they're like, no, <laughs> we don't care who you know. We don't care what favors you called in or whatever, allegedly. Um, we are looking into this. So it's like, man, you go from relief to being stressed again. And now you're spending money again on defense attorney and all this stuff. So that's basically what happened. Um, they did end up getting a special prosecutor in 2019 later on that year. And it went to another grand jury and he was indicted again on charges in February of 2020. So, you know, he's back in the hot seat and now... Um, I can actually go over the, the current charges. So he has disorderly conduct charges. He faces six counts of felony disorderly conduct and a disorderly conduct charge for a false crime report is a class four felony in Illinois, punishable by up to three years in prison and a $25,000 fine. A judge would determine whether convictions on multiple counts would yield sentences to run concurrently or consecutively. So for those that don't deal with the uh, legal system at all, uh, um, you know, concurrently means if he's found, let's say guilty on three counts, one holds four years, one holds two years, and one holds five years, then he could just 
be serving time for them all at the same time. If it's consecutively, then you you know they might say, okay, you'll do the four year one first, and then you'll do you know the next one, and then you do the next one. Um, so it's one at a time, okay, not all together. So it's kind of like adding them up. Now, you know, if you've ever dated anyone or known anyone in your family in the legal system, you understand those two terms. So that's a pretty big deal. I mean, you're talking six counts. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully they have some mercy on him. If they do have enough evidence to find him guilty, we'll see the trial um, actually has started for that this week. So we'll see. I know that people are following this case. I honestly have forgotten all about it because it was it feels like forever and a day ago that this happened. And there's so many so much has happened in the world since this case first started. So what do y'all think is the motivation for them to just be going after Jesse Smollett so hard uh, on this case? And do you think it's worth more taxpayer money to keep trying to prosecute this or do you think he brought it on himself and uh they need to go as hard as they can let me know what you think thank you for watching please like comment and subscribe also check out my podcast the expendables with my co-host in from new york we record live on his youtube on sundays at 8 p.m eastern time i will link his channel below in the description box we also upload our audio to Apple, Spotify, and more every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for checking us out.